705 uh, motion to open the meeting. So. Said motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay, so we're going to start with the public hearing 2022 annual town meeting zoning article pursuant to chapter Mass General Law, chapter 40A, section 5. Consider amendments and additions of the zoning bylaw as follows. Amend section 50-2.1, add a caretaker's unit to the de terms defined. And second amendment would be 50-4.5, add a caretaker's unit to the table of uses. So I think Sam Joslin, a zoning enforcement officer, is here to speak. Uh, so the reason for this is we've had over the years a number of um, businesses looking to add a caretaker's unit, someone to be on site uh, next to or above the building. Uh, it's very common uh, across the Commonwealth. We have some in town that people don't probably even realize on Federal Way down on Washington Street. Uh, one, where else? We got one on Main Street. All downtown with the businesses down there, most of those units have living units above them. Um, we have been asked by a couple of businesses in town that are coming in whether we'd entertain this again. We thought it's a, it's a great idea. I think it's something that adds to the security of a property. It adds to potential income on that property. It's additional tax revenue. Uh, we've limited it uh, through the definition to essentially the same dimensions as our accessory units, which would be a maximum of half the floor area of the principal dwelling up to a max of 900 square feet of habitable space, uh, two bedroom max. Uh, so it should limit, you know, anyone who has fears of additional kids in the school system. Yeah, could we get one or two? Sure. Uh, I don't think there's a huge, um, you know, a bunch of people in our, this is only for our industrial business and limited bis business districts. Most of our business district already has units above the businesses that were pre-existing non-conforming. Our industrial, uh, there's really not a lot of industrial. Uh, I think Greenwood has a unit above them. Uh, certainly um, Chesterton's not going to be doing it. Uh, I'm not aware of too many others out there, but there's a couple other businesses that are going in or some that are existing that are interested. And just because they're, you know, it, it's bad timing as far as our zoning goes, they're left out where everyone got to have them. So we thought this was a, a fair way to deal with this, to allow those uh, caretaker units with some, some stipulations as far as how, how big they are. Okay, so we're going to limit it to 900 square feet. And that's, keep in mind, that's 900 square feet of living space. So that does not include your bathrooms, your laundries, hallways, stairways, closets. So by the time you get that, most of the accessory units I'm seeing come in, square footage, they're around, you know, 1,400 square feet. Um, so it does give you plenty of room to do two decent-sized bedrooms, a kitchen, living room, and, uh, you know, have plenty of room in there. Okay. And again, I just want to clarify, this is for non-residential, correct? Correct. Because this is... We a, didn't we have a fear one time where residents would automatically start popping up um, in-law apartments and stuff at one time? I think we've taken care of the in-law apartments. Yes, we have a... Accessory uh, dwellings that are attached Okay. through the zoning is okay now. Yep. Um, that was voted in last year. Okay. So this is basically if you're putting up a building, you can have an apartment above it. Okay. Kind of maybe like um, Stock and Cron. Yeah, uh, right. And, and the, building, the definition yeah. clarifies it's industrial business use with a caretaker unit. Right. So it's non-residential. Two questions. Number one, to let the general public know, like I don't, you know, always know in layman terms so that they get the understanding of what we're actually talking about. Yep. And, and, and for the uh, in-law apartments, we change that to accessory apartments because we do allow rental and there is a separate uh, criteria for in-law or accessory apartments rather. So this would be separate. Yep. I think the opportunities, I, I mean, I went through town and there's, if there was a dozen, I'd be shocked at this point. Okay. Um, but again, it's those few that want it that we've kind of excluded can't have it. Uh, Pub 97's got a couple apartments okay. above it. You know, the, the other businesses we have in town, like the stuff that's up further on Salem where the light department is and the strip mall, they're not going to have that. I mean, this isn't something they'd utilize. 
Um, the ones that have come in, um, area Canlian across the street, sometimes they have people that are there late for an event and instead of going home, they wanted to have a unit that yep. they could sleep in. It's not necessarily gonna be a living unit, but yep. just a sleeping area. We currently prohibit it. Uh, Baldini, who's building on Salem Street, uh, expressed an interest at some point possibly doing it. Same thing with Daniels, I believe. Um, so th there's a couple, but it's few and far between. And again, for the record, you work for the, you're on the zoning board. Nope, I am the building commissioner and zoning enforcement. Okay, uh, I don't live in town. I don't have a horse in the race. Okay. This is generated only by uh, people coming in, coming in and commenting, saying, hey, you know, this, this might be something nice to create some housing that's low impact, uh, create additional revenue for the town, some additional growth for the town that we desperately need, and uh, give, give some of these businesses some incentive to come here uh, by having some, some revenue. Perfect. Thank you for explaining that. Sure. That helps. That helps a lot of people who definitely missed it. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions, John? I I don't know. I mean, do you have any of the analysis that you're talking about? Like, is that documented anywhere? In uh, terms analysis and what? As far as how many? Yeah. Like the um, potential it, for the. I mean, I I was kind of surprised to see it because it doesn't doesn't strike me as a huge need in town. It's not. Um, it, it's just, it's really, we have a number of them that are pre-existing non-conforming or possibly pre-existing or, or might not have been permitted somewhere along the line um, that have six. been there that might be beyond statute of limitations. Uh, so it, it's somewhat of a housekeeping and somewhat of a fairness piece that, you know, if I get enough requests or there's an interest in, you know, it, this was fairly simple to draft. Uh, so I thought, okay, if, if it's something that can help a couple guys out, great. Uh, do I see it as a huge building and boom think, in town? To no. me, it seems it's it's more about creating some rental units than care, caretaker aspects of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, and I mean, you know, we we went over that with some of the other towns, and the fact that someone's in there, lights on, you know, just observing, even though they might not be, you know, the gardener, um, they will be on site so that if there's people you know, kind of sneaking around, looking at these places. They've got eyes on they, They've got eyes on, some lights on. You know, is it truly your caretaker as far as a maintenance? No, it, it's meant to be just a on-site personnel, like uh, above Esty Park. Uh, the gentleman that lives above uh, 105, the front building, uh, he is not the maintenance grounds person, but he's there on site. If there's anything that goes on, he's got a number he can call. Uh, so it does help out with the business, and it generates, again, a revenue and another uh, additional unit in town we get credit for. I can't think of maybe six. Yeah, I was hard-pressed to find yeah. too many. Yeah. So, yeah, no, there is not a huge need. Right. Um, it's just one of those things that was fairly simple. It was something we discussed years ago. It was backburnered because it really wasn't being pushed. Um, I've had a couple recently, like I said, Baldini and Arakalian came in, which brought it to the forefront again. Mm -hmm. We had one on uh, Federal Way that I didn't even know was there until they came in to uh, register to vote. And we looked back in the plans and found out it was, was allowed when really should it have been. Not really, but again, statute of limitations is passed. That was approved. So, um, you know, it, it also helps those if there's any question of legality later on we can uh you know point to it and say okay well just you know run through the uh the paperwork and and register it now so as, as one of these units now, any new construction so if somebody want to put a new construction you know one story high could they directly speaking double that size just for an in our apartment just to offset the cost of sure business. yeah yep so that's uh baldini was the prime example okay. initially he came in with a plan for a second okay. uh floor apartment we told him no he's changed that since to storage with future plans to hopefully okay. get something through um yep you know whether he does that now or not right. maybe plans change but again but for the record it's limited to the 900 square feet of livable no. <clears throat> yes. No more yeah, we wanted to keep it small because right. again, no, we don't want you. someone, you know, creating multi-story. No, no, no. I agree with you there. 100%. You know, housing and and something that's a little more, yep. you know, intrusive. This should be pretty invisible to most. Yeah. 
Perfect. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, over uh, Fatty's gas station, yep. uh, he was looking to do an apartment up there at one point. I yep. think he's changed because he has storage. But again, yep. if he decides, hey, you know what, to make ends meet, it's cheaper for me to sell my house and live above the sure. the gas station. Okay. Sure. You know, no, I think no one would really know other than there might be a light on That's later right. than his operating hours. So. Okay. What about the uh, egresses? Two means of egress, one means yeah, of egress? Building code still applies to everything. So it's... You know, you don't got to get out of jail free for building code. Right. You just get a pass on zoning. Okay. Well, want to fly a motion? I would fly that motion to... Uh, favorable or unfavorable, yes. basically. Um, for favorable. John? I'm not convinced, so I'm, I'm not favorable. I think I'm going to be favorable for this. So what it does is make anybody that has a unit in there now, you know, makes it usable. These aren't going to be popping up all over the industrial zone. Do you have yeah. a, a question as to that I can help? Because I'm, you know, honestly, it's it's going to end up on the ballot with unfavorable from planning. Certainly lessens its chances. But again, I don't live in town. I don't get anything out of it other than people ask me and I write stuff up and put it forward. So if there's something that would ease your mind, be glad to tell you. If nothing will and you just don't want it, that's cool too. Yeah, what's and, the uh, um, What's the hiccup? I, well, I don't. I don't feel informed enough, to be honest, to to know if this is a good thing or not. And I feel the way that it's written isn't. It doesn't match what what we're hearing. It's not intended to be a caretaker unit. It's just intended to create rental apartments. I think if you want to, <clears throat> and so I think, and I agree, there's probably a, there's a housing issue there. I don't see this solving it one way or the other. So, so just to, to, to give me, you some I'm background on why we called it a caretaker unit, through mass zoning, it's typically what these units are called, even if they're not landscape on-site service help. Um, so I just use the general term that. Massachusetts tends to use um, and, and yes it says right in the def definition it's an accessory dwelling unit right and that's what it is an accessory dwelling unit um, but it's typically when they're part of a you either have mixed use which would allow multiple units you would have on the residential side your accessory apartments what they usually call them in zoning with your small businesses is caretaker units or forget there was some other term that was really kind of archaic that I, I just thought was just kind of a weird term. So that was the reason I used caretaker unit, not to call out specifically that it's someone there, you know, with a badge on guarding the site and walking around. It's just a unit above a building. And that's the general term that seems sure. to be used in mass. Yeah. So, so we, you thinking like back into the 1800s where they got a lit and then they just come out and walk around <laughs> and say, make sure everything's okay. It's, I don't think it's going to impact anything. I don't think it's going to hurt. I think, if anything, it'll be more of a tax burden, a base for the town where people already well, have the units, and it just, I think it's going to make. But again, how many units are we, how many units are we talking probably, about? So. But it legitimizes <laughs> the people that are actually there, and if they want to actually move, if they want to sell, if something happens insurance wise, it's, it legitimizes what they have. Yeah. It also increases housing stock, which Groveland drastically lacks. Even if it's some, such a small community, something's better than nothing. I mean, with this, if you want me to call it something else and that would help, I can call it, you know, Cornflakes if you'd like, or Charlie. <laughs> what would you pick a name? You take his accessory unit, I mean. Uh, but, you know, so the, on site apartment. Housing, the housing stock mm -hmm. argument, how does the number of units we're talking about help us? Like, what's the benefit? One unit would be a Any benefit. number. We, we had zero okay, growth this year. Get, we have no growth. That, that growth this is... This doesn't solve that. This, is, this doesn't significantly contribute to our housing shortage or tax base issue. No, but it to a it well, typically add. we have anywhere from, you know, 8 to 12 units per year we add. 
uh, in housing, which isn't a lot. Uh, this year it was way down. Uh, we had little growth, low growth equals less money from the state. Um, with even one added unit, that's one added unit. So it's, no, it will not add a ton of growth. So that's not the argument that, um, it, it's some growth, but no, this is not the answer to our growth problem. Right. Uh, when we talk about the MBTA communities later, we'll have some growth for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna knock your socks off. Yes, we will, we will find growth. Want growth? Yeah. We're gonna have growth. We got some, some crazy growth. But uh, again, if, if you, you know, if you want a different term, we can term it different. If you don't like it at all, that's cool. Um, I just, if we're going to move it forward in some respect, we can alter it here, vote on it based on those alterations, or we can nix it and it'll go into the article with, without planning board, you know, um, support. And that, and again, that's fine. If the townspeople want it, great. If they don't, sure. again, I mean, I, do you, no matter what, you won't see it from my house. No, I think two it. out of three. Right. You need a full board. You need full board? Yeah, with a three, it's not just majority. It's... And again, it's not a, a vote, it's just it's support. It requires a simple majority here, but is that for the, you mean on the... No, we don't have five. Oh, that's for the... Um, More, for the vote. That's for town meeting. For the vote. Yeah. yeah. So what if we were at different than caretakers? Caretakers... I mean, well, I guess the question is, is that the issue or is there other issues with it? If it's just the title, we can call it... I don't know, pick a term, we can, you know, accessory business, unit. business accessory apartment, yeah. you know, or, or non-residential, well, that, that, that gets confusing. <laughs> non-residential. <laughs> no, no, you don't do yeah, I don't want to do that. Uh, you know, business or industrial use accessory apartment, you know, something along those lines is fine. But uh, if there's in the, the content or the body of it, there's problems, then, you know, that's fine too. Got a limitation of 900 square feet, that means the family room is going to be, you know, 900 square feet right with a bedroom two bedrooms and maybe a bathroom so i don't think the impact is going to be great again you know and worst case if it's a hey you know come back in a year we can do that too um like i said doesn't my my impetus for bringing this is a couple people saying, hey, why don't we and why can't we? Sure. This person has it, that person has it, this person has it, why can't I have it? We look at it and go reasonably, is there any reason we don't want them to have it? There wasn't a good reason when we had an internal discussion. But again, I, I don't want to force your hand, push you to anything you don't want to commit to. Uh, again, this isn't... This won't be the beginning or end of Groveland as we know it, uh, one way or the other. So, uh, if it means, like I said, minor changes, great. We can vote with the minor changes, or we can just say, "Hey, you know what? We're not ready. Bring it back next year." Because I think this is our last. Is this our last before meeting before? Because we kind of, with the transition of Rebecca into town administrator and Annie into the planning, the timeline kind of got lost in the shuffle, and we had a handful of articles that it was right. the all right let's let's hurry up we wouldn't be able to properly notify for a continuance of the hearing because i think today we yeah there's i don't think we can do it and yeah, if we did it, it would be really pushing it if we fly the language i'm, I'm in favor jim hi in favor? No, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, like I said, I don't it's foresee. Low impact. I think it's some kind of growth. I, I think more the, not so much the growth, but the low impact. What I'm saying to you is, is we don't have to fear that somebody's going to rent out this apartment and the industrial park and it's going to turn into a rave party. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I don't think it's going to no, be no, a No, 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 I understand. What I'm saying to you either. is, no. that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> I think that eliminates all those fears. And like I said, as a business owner, why wouldn't I be able to have an apartment above to rent just to help offset the cost of living? And as far as the caretaker part, too, I did include that they are employed in part, at least, to care for, monitor, repair, and maintain the principal uh, use of the structure. 
And again, that could be as simple as yeah, we're going to yeah. take 20 bucks off your rent to right. yeah. call the police if you see a car driving around. Right. Uh, it's a really low burden. You're going to mow? Uh, yeah, and I mean, that's a typical landlord agreement that, hey, you know what, you, you mow my lawn, we'll take some, knock something off the rent. Right. Um, it's really not much different, but there is some sort of... Give and take. Uh, yeah, there, there's something there that, yes, they have to have some sort of buy-in to the business in that way. Like, a, 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 you know... Whether or not that'll truly happen is... Who knows? Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Which, again, like I said, Estes is a good example. I don't know if the guy that lives there actually does anything other than go home at night and turn the light on and maybe if something's going on, call the cops or call maintenance, but... I think you know, Jerry's, right. Jerry's Variety has it over... Pub 97 yep. has one yep. over Jerry's, Pub 97, and the lawyer's usually, office, and that Val, over 97 whatever plows. salon there. He does um, all the uh, maintenance around. I believe he yep. plows, right? Yep. There's, there's, there's a lot of them around. But again, most of them pre either predate zoning or, possi or at very least are beyond the statute of limitations to take action. Um, that used to be a bigger deal. Uh, a few years ago, they changed zoning to basically have the consequences mirror grandfathering. So where before... if it was beyond the statute of limitations, but not legal. And say the building burnt down, you weren't able to put it back. Uh, no one paid attention to that versus grandfathering. So now, yeah, with a, a special permit or a finding, you can put it back. So it's, it's, I don't know. It, it, it's, yeah. it's not as problematic as it used to be uh, for sale of those pre-existing non-conforming or beyond statute of limitation uh, units. They're, gran they're grandfathered in basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, same, like I said, a few years ago, it was a different consequence, but now they changed it. So essentially, it shares the same protections as grandfathering, where um, if you lose it by, you know, fire, catastrophe, whatever, or decide to tear it down, you can rebuild with a finding and it's all good. So there's no, there's no more consequence for that illegal apartment. It would, you know, that used to be where if you lost it, then you lost it and couldn't lost have it, it back. Lost it, mate. Um, so yeah, there's no, no plus or minus anymore. Well, Chairman, I'm do waiting you need for time to think about board, it. Do yeah. you want to come back to it? I, it, yeah. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm still not, I'm still not sold. I just don't feel, I don't feel informed enough. Okay. And that's fair. I mean, you know, again, this was Supported. the last like, minute. I want, like, I want to know what I'm supporting, and I just yep. don't know necessarily. I hear what you're saying, and I oh, hear I, what you guys are saying. I get it. And again, you know, I've, this was I've, last minute. It was the, hey, let's run it up the flagpole. Um, we'll let a, a town administrator decide, do they want to put it on the ballot with a non-favorable or um, just hold it off for a year? Um, like I said, doesn't. I think if I were going to vote, I'd be favor. How about you? Oh, I don't. I'm favorable, no doubt about it. But we need unanimous. And what I'm saying to you is, mm. you know, we don't have one at this point, and we're not going to pressure on our um, former on our members to do anything that they're not comfortable with at this point. Yep. So that's what I'm saying. If you're not comfortable with this, I mean, we could very easily just put it on record that at this time it isn't unfavorable. No, well, it's favorable with with. With, it's unfavorable with a, how do you want to word it? It's favorable with a majority. With uh, a two thirds. thirds. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, that's I all they need that to know. It's either you know going to be favorable That way your not. voice is covered. And, and that's and all let good. the voters decide which way they want to go with that. Yeah. Are you okay yep. with that? Are you okay with that? I'm okay with everything. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like we're going to table and leave it up to the administrator. Yeah, I mean, at, at this point with two out of three, it's a, it would end up being an unfavorable because, you, you, you know, with a uh, with a five member board, it was would be the three sure. out of five. But with three, it's three out of three. Um, unfavorable is fine. Um, and again, at the meeting, if anyone asks or has concerns, you know, at town meeting, we can let them know that it was you know due to the speed of this and the lack of information. Um, and again, it maybe town administrator decides let's just hold off until yeah, you can provide more context in next, the meeting as to what the next year. Was I mean, it's not yeah. it's not a life or death. Um, Nothing's you know, pressing. I don't think so. Right. I mean, at this point, the right. ones that are interested, I think Eric Halian's kind of walked away for a bit. Um, Baldini's Baldini, he, he's just trying to get his business in for now. He's built it with p right. potential future plans, right. but that costs money. Um, I'm sure he wants to get up and running before. 
Um, those are the only two I can think of right now. Um, so right now, just an example, and I, I don't know Baldini personally. I know nothing about him. We but approved, just I, we approved the site. I remember that. <laughs> I'm glad you came. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying to you is, he'll build his building. He'll have storage of 900 feet, potentially speaking. And then if and what gets ratified in the future, and it gets approved at that point, he'll be able to because yep, he, he can has do a it already out. built in. And the construction. Yep. So, cool. Well, thank you for your time. No, thank and, you. Uh, Thanks for coming in. See you next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's sooner. No, like I said, I don't know what the, the end result is, yeah. if Selectman will move it forward or not. I, again, doesn't really affect me one way or the other, oh. other than, you know, no, section. No, I, I think what you brought to the table is... 5-2.1. I think what you brought to the table and... Um, some of the questions we've asked, the clarification gives the town of Groveland a better understanding of what we're looking at also. Yeah, and I mean, next time uh, presenting it, we can certainly have some facts and figures as far as, you know, supporting as to what's out there, what's existing, what the potential is. Um, I did do the legwork to take a quick look. Yep. There's not much, but, you know, I apologize for not bringing it. Um, so what happens when you rush? <laughs> Thanks, Sam. No, that's fine. I, I just don't want to. I don't want to necessarily oh, support. Nothing, I don't feel make, comfortable good decisions is changing not changing a bylaw <laughs> because one or two people are interested in having an well, apartment. Just like I just, you, if you're I, building in the industrial zone now, you can add an apartment over. Makes it a little bit more appealing as well. Yeah, and I, I mean, like, just, like like now, just the industrial use only. You know what I mean? If you're in the industrial zone, the only thing you can build is industrial. Or whatever's in you know right. whatever's in the master plan or the bylaws, you got to check the boxes, right. right? Or you go to zoning. So this would give it a little bit more enticing. Okay, listen, I'm going to build a garage, but I'm going to put an apartment over it too. So it's twofold. Yeah, I get that. I don't know if that's in in the bigger picture. I don't. I'm not sold that that's like the best for the town. That's all. Okay. And and yeah, it's some my opinion. Now I'm I'm this, I'm this, sitting here. No, I got you. At some point <laughs> there opinion. was caretaker units allowed in town. They were taken out because there were concerns about uh residential units in a business and industrial zone uh because people would complain about noise and all that. Well, I don't know if it was the right decision or wrong to pull it out, but if you rent an apartment over a business you know, over a pizza shop, like across the street, and it smells like pizza. Yeah. Well, you kind of knew it going in, so I, w right. I didn't, didn't feel too too bad for him. But I do understand why uh, it, it, w it was pulled because there was those complaints of, "Hey, there's people here. It's noisy. It smells. It's whatever." So um, again, we'll, we'll take a look at it, see what what the town wants to do, and um, go from there. Thank you. But no problem. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Sam. Have a good night. You have, too. Have fun. <laughs> Moving forward, are we uh, going to do Whitestone? We got Rennie? Okay. Okay, so next up would be Whitestone Village approval of the sign design. Um, that would be you, Annie? Yes, it would be. The company that Whitestone is using doesn't actually provide like a proof. Um, but Rennie and I reread through the decision or the special permit from. 2003 I believe it was and essentially it is up to the road commissioner to decide what kind of sign goes there Rennie has decided uh it's going to be a 30 inch sign which is within his uh like I can't remember the name of the standards that he uses but it's within the sign standards it's going to be a yellow background with uh black writing that's going to state no access to white stone village and it's going to be instead of where, so the current sign is on the back of the stop sign on the left-hand side. The new one, it's going to be on the right-hand side on its own post. And it's going to be properly done, unlike the sign that's behind the stop sign right now, which is not supposed to be there. Um, yeah, and that is what... Rennie has decided. And it's the one sign. I thought at one point there was talk of two. Like one. It, is, it is just going to be one sign. The reason for that was partly because on the left-hand side where the stop sign is right now, there's really not much room for a second sign. And also, I don't know when... The, um, so there was that. And also, Rennie didn't really want 
two signs, he thought it would be excessive, which is You don't need two signs yeah. there. I Fair. And I think I Whitestone. Think yeah. yeah. I think, what's her name, Rhonda? Yep. I think she's got a meeting with the, a board meeting in April. Yeah. You know, with some. The Whitestone board. With the Whitestone people, and, you know, they're going to also explain to them that you can't pass or repass down that yeah. street. Yeah. And I don't know if either any of you have, I went down there after Rennie kind of gave me a heads up. They have put a ton of signage on their side of the of Georgia Street, I guess, saying, like, do not re-enter this way. Like, this is exit only. Like, don't use Georgia Street. There are a ton of signs that they have put up since then. She was in the meeting. I felt pretty confident that yeah. they were going to take care of it. And I also received a call from a Whitestone resident because I, I, Rhonda sent out, I think she said it was a letter. I can't remember specifically, but she was like, Hi, I got this notice that said that the planning board wanted us to contact, like, Amazon and tell them not to drive down Georgia Street. And I was like, no, 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 that's, that was for the management company to do. And she was like, oh, okay, I understand. So residents <laughs> they know get something. They get it, um, yep. And, yeah, so I, I'm confident that the sign, it will be done properly. Whitestone is footing the bill for it. Rennie will be fine with the sign in years to come maintaining it. He said he's okay with it. Um, he's working closely with Rhonda. They're going to coordinate the whole thing together. So it sounds like this is going to be the last that we have to hear of this. I sure do hope so. Me too. <laughs> I sure do hope so. Although I was reading through minutes from 10 years ago for something unrelated, and I did see in the minutes this exact conversation 10 years ago. History repeats itself. It sure does. It sure does. But, yeah, so so that's all. Um, 30 inches. Yellow background, black writing, no entrance to Whitestone Village because the sign right now has too many words on it. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Anyone have anything to add? I'm good. good with that. How about you? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Hey, I'm allowed to vote now. So. How about you? you How about okay? me? Anything to add? There's going to be lights on that, correct? <laughs> Flashing. Rainbow lights. Oh Yellow flashing God. lights. Oh, I just figured a bunch there will of be there will be no lights. There will be no lights. There will be no lights. There will be, no lights. Okay. There will be a street light shining. Now. Okay. Well, that's what I was thinking. More of a floodlight. No, it'll be just your typical lighting. You okay. know, you can. Oh yeah, typical, your typical street lighting. Street, Very yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Typical town signage. So yes, I approve. Goody. Good. Good. So while you while you're there, it's a town planner update. Yes. Um. Not. A ton of stuff, no new applications or anything like that. Um, someone did ask for a Form A application for an A&R lot. Um, haven't received it back, so no rush. Um, I believe from the information I've gathered thus far, it's just a lot line adjustment in a backyard. Um, I don't think it's going to be anything too crazy. It's not creating a new lot, obviously, or anything like that. Um, so I'll be in touch when that um, comes through my desk, and we have to have a meeting on it. Um, the master plan committee, steering committee, John is on it. We had a great meeting, I thought. Um, doing well. We're uh, in the process of organizing three um, kind of public meeting dates to have for to invite residents to ask them about kind of different things we're looking at, different areas of town. Um, we're thinking, I think it's the second week of May. Um, yeah, the tentative dates, I think, are the 10th, 12th, and 14th. Um, it would be here, I think, 6 to 7 or something like that. Uh, if anyone would like to attend, I'll be letting you know when it is once we solidify the dates. Um, and they're working on a survey as well to get that out to residents. Um, and then the only other thing, really, is the MBTA zoning stuff. Uh, Sam and I did do our presentation to the selectmen on the 14th, so two weeks ago, um, and it went well. They obviously had a lot of questions. We had very little answers because the state hasn't given us any answers. Um, yeah, so Sam and I are still working on coming up with different options of what what it could look like. Um and I think, yeah, the 11th, the selectmen have a meeting, and Sam and I are planning on presenting a couple options then. Uh, but we, we haven't had a meeting to talk about what those might look like. But we are slowly kind of making sure it's at the forefront of our mind, the zoning yeah. changes, because it is 
750 units to zone is a lot. So we're getting there, but I'm confident we can get it done in a respectful manner to the town that does it justice, hopefully. I mean, also, the state hasn't even finalized the legislation, so who knows what can happen? They could completely change it. When there's a new, <laughs> there's a new regime, you know, that... Well, it'll be finalized before then. The comment period ends on the 31st okay. of this month, and then we have to submit our, like, kind of, like, intent to apply on May 2nd. But we still have to go to town vote no matter what we do anyways. Oh, yeah. So it's... Theoretically, I could spend the next like year and a half and get working voted down. towards pushing this forward for it to just get completely shot down at town meeting, which is totally fine. I guess we would lose millions in funding, but <laughs> that's not my problem. It is my problem. It's very much my problem. But if that's what the town wants, so be it. So be it. I think part of that will be making sure people understand what they're voting for though. And yeah, that's what part of the consequences re are either way. Exactly. And that's kind of why I think I, I'm, I'm glad Sam and I have really been kind of on top of it and constantly thinking about it because the more I think we talk to people and explain to people the situation, I mean, we're two years out from having to vote on it. I think that's, that will do us, some justice in two years because it'll be i mean it's already on your minds you know and in two years you'll be voting on it and you'll be so educated on it that you can talk to other people about it um so hopefully that we, we can kind of run an educational campaign to explain to people that yes 750 units is really scary but also not being able to afford sidewalks is if we do good. it smart with overlays, you know, we've got two years, I think yeah. it'll, it'll be tamed down. I mean, that was part of the, and Sam should have explained, we, we, anything in the industrial zone could have been used as an overlay as well. Yeah, that's, yeah, you know, that's these true. These accessory dwellings could have been used. The, the six count towards the 750? No, 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 <laughs> no. The, if you use the space... You kind of like you can't overlay Whitestone. You can't overlay Nichols. Nichols because it's mm -hmm. over fifty-five. This is going to be everything. This is going to be all ages. Mm -hmm. so no restrictions. So the less you give them for land and the less you give them for an overlay, the better you are. Yeah. So every little bit helps. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the, the, yeah. No restrictions. It, you can't restrict bedroom size. You can't restrict age. You can't Talking restrict. Right. What else? You can't restrict anything. The, the kind of the only thing that you would expect is that some of it has to be affordable, but that's not the case. It doesn't have to be affordable at all. Which What's affordable like, isn't even affordable. So that's based on the town median price or something like 80%. that. Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Yeah. Yeah. So even like, I mean, it's, a, I mean, forty Bs are affordable housing. This doesn't even have to claim to be affordable. Right. So, and, and like I said, this is all still draft legislation. Like, it, it is law, but the process for it is all still a little, like, muddy, I guess. Is a comment period open, you said? It ends in two days. That's for who to comment? Municipalities? or Anyone can right. send in a comment. Um, I know comment? Sam and I, at the Board of Selectmen meeting, they said uh, the Board of Selectmen was going to send in comments. Okay. Um, I'm talking I've spoken to a couple of residents who are planning on sending in comments. Um, I know multiple towns for, through MVPC they have sent in comments. Um, I think the state is hearing a lot from people. I had a there was MVPC organized a meeting with Senator Keneally, I believe, or Secretary Keneally, and he more or less alluded to the fact that yes we know this is crazy to like a lot to ask of small municipalities but we think it's going to be great no i think it's not going to be great <laughs> i think it's going to double the size of a town very quickly that doesn't have the infrastructure well it, we're not the only ones who don't have we have more infrastructure than west newbury and boxford, boxford true but, yeah but and they have to do 750 units too 750 is the the base boxford's gonna say see ya and yeah, and that's the thing. 
I, I'm going to work towards it because I don't want to lose out on that funding prematurely. And if we end up losing out on it, then we, we end up losing out on it. But that's going to be a choice that the taxpayers are going to have to realize will most likely increase their taxes if we lose out on... That's why we have to do overlays. On, on funding. So if, like Brad was saying, if it's done responsibly, it might be an easier pill to swallow. But when it, when it comes down to it, we would be zoning this as of right. So they would not need anything besides a building permit. And they would probably do a site plan review with the planning board, but... It's, a, it's by right, and that means you walk in and you get your permit. You do three meetings and you're done. Yeah. It's really scary. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, it's 750, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. Would there be any zoning height restrictions? Sorry? Would there be any height restrictions? <sighs> you know. Would they waive those? That's a, I, that's a question to ask. I can't remember if they've specified that or not. I want to specify parking. Or they rely on the MBTA, which we don't have. There, see the MBTA. That's the joke of it all. Is it's like <laughs> That's the, I know. MBTA adjacent. I'm like, what's the tie-in to? Like, what are you going to walk to Haverhill? I, well, they got to make the decision within what this next year. Any 2023 MB. MB yeah. So we're an MBTA adjacent, adjacent community. So we have until 2024 so MBTA how, but how communities. But does it help MBTA for us to add 750 units? Like, so it's, get the it's, it's not about it's, it's not about the MBTA. It's it's D well no it's so it's MBTA it right? <laughs> yeah it's no it's not MBTA asking for this it's DHDC <laughs> it's the DHDC asking for it. Department of Housing and Community Department of De Department of oh God DHDC is the okay come on anyway it's it's it just so happens, Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, it's their kind of... Baby. Exactly. And they are just using kind of the MBTA as, a, as, a, as like a base map, I guess is the, a, one way to put it. Um, someone in the meeting that Senator Keneally or Secretary Keneally was at I think it was North Andover or Andover. They were like, so this is like based around MBTA. And for those communities, they have to do it within a half mile radius of their stations. We at least have the luxury of being able to put it kind of wherever we want, as long as it's near a major road. There is no station. And for, I, I, maybe it was Andover. I can't remember. But someone asked, they were like, so will there be money to improve our station? Because it's not in good shape. And that was no. an answer they couldn't question, or a question they couldn't answer. So it's the MBTA it doesn't really actually have much involvement in it, which is kind of. And they're always in the red. <laughs> I mean, they have money to improve the station would be the least of the concerns. You know, I I don't know well, how it's. They were like, if we're zoning all this, all these housing for the M to encourage MBTA ridership, are you going to incur Are you going to fix up the station at least? And that they couldn't answer that. So. I think there's a lot to learn, and I think maybe the uh, state, the uh, Keneally and Tar, and mm. you know, should have some more answers. Yeah, I mean, the reason there aren't more answers is because it's still just in draft form. No, I understand that, but so. we we want to know: is there going to be height restrictions? Are they going to waive height restrictions? What kind of parking, you know, situations are they going to cause? We got, we got two years to worry about it. Two years is going to go like this. Well, remember the seatbelt law? Don't worry about the seatbelts. It's only going to be something we're going to try. <laughs> well, I'm glad we all have to wear seatbelts. That's okay, but still. <laughs> that like one it. worked out well. I Maybe don't like will. when the state puts the cut before the horse. And then as a scramble. It's not a housing mandate, though. But it could be a housing mandate, and it probably I don't think may so. be. I use the word may. I just, I think we want to go anywhere we can overlay. Yeah. So by the next meeting, probably, depending on the timing of it with the next select board meeting, I might have some ideas for you, but 
I don't know what the timing will be like because right now we there's nothing on that would be on the agenda for next meeting. Um, but yeah, so the 11th. Could we, could we overlay the turtle district where they can't habitat, where they can't build? No, because then it wouldn't be a buildable area. Mm -hmm. Just like how we can't choose 50 acres of wetlands. Like we can't overlay Crane Pond. Well, first of all, we don't own Crane Pond. But if we did own it, we can't just say 50 acres because you, you can't build there. So maybe you could, but they'd have to go to National Heritage and that would put them out 50 to 100 years before they could actually do something. <laughs> that, I, I, I know where you're going with, with that and I'm not going there. But no, we can't do that. They will see that and say no. Okay. But we have, but it, the, I mean, we can't overlay. I mean, we can overlay it on over some state land as long as we have enough land that is not state land. Because obviously the state's not going to give up their land. Doesn't Fish and Game have a parcel, a valuable parcel in the industrial zone? They have a couple parcels back there. I know they do. That border uh, Georgetown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do. So like, Is, that Paco, is that Paco River watershed or is that... Is that not habitat, habitat or? Uh, what do you mean? The state owns it. I don't think Parker River owns it. No, is that in the habitat? That almost that whole area is habitat. But there's already stuff developed there. Like Crane Pond, there's nothing there. So it's a little harder. I would have, I would imagine for natural heritage, it'd be harder for them to swallow. Like taking undeveloped land and turning it into. But if they lay it over their own state property, then you know, good luck trying to get the infrastructure in there. Well, yeah, but they might because I mean, no. Even if in two years from now, town meeting votes yes, we approve this. We still have to send the state, our proposed parcel, and they still have to approve it. And they could say no. They could say this isn't, this isn't build, fully built. I mean, they could say who knows what. They could say this isn't fully buildable. This is who know, too far away from a major road. They, they, could, they could still shoot it down. Like, it would be like if we had overlaid it over just Nichols and Whitestone. They'd be like, this is an age-restricted parcel like this or well not age restricted parcel but these are age restricted pro like housing units right those units can't count towards it no because right. of the age right they wouldn't count all right so not many answers lots to think about though but you guys are working on scenarios now and yeah present something sometime soon <sighs> yeah so we're Options. thinking select select board the uh, select board meeting on the 11th i Doubt we'll have a meeting next Tuesday. If anything, it would be the 19th that we would have our next meeting. So you can sure come to the Board of Selectmen meeting if you would like. Uh, or I can just, if we have a meeting on the 19th, I can give you an update. But, I mean, after the 11th, the next time I have an update, I'll present it at a meeting. But it'll be interesting to see what happens because a lot of towns are feeling the same way. It's, we're, we're by no means alone in, in feeling this way. No, it was just I would imagine different. every single town feels this way. Shaking in their boots. Yeah. I mean, certain like Haverhill, it's easier for them because the area around their um, stations is already essentially zoned for something similar. So for them, it's like, okay, check, check, check. Right. We're all set. Yeah. Um, Here's a packet. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's super straightforward for them, but it's, yeah, big impact, huge impact. It would be, I think it's like like a quarter of our current housing stock yeah. or something like that. Insane. Yeah, so. almost doubles the town. Mm. Oh, well, well, it'll be fine. It'll be great. We'll figure it out. And All we're right. starting on it early, so it'll be good. But other than minutes? that... Oh, no, you didn't do the minutes yet. Ooh, That's you okay. You don't have to go in minutes. order. You're not required you to. to. You just have to order. talk about it. I saw Sam there, so I figured we'd just jump right in. Yeah, yeah why not? Okay, now so we're talking about it. We want to fly a motion <laughs> of approval of March 1st meeting minutes. Do I have a second? Can second. I please? He's already got it. Uh, All in favor? Then I'll eye it. I moved it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> motion to adjourn this meeting.
Second, Jim. Oh, I'm second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, Good night everybody. Friends.